Hey G, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, firstly, congratulations on 50 test matches. You'll be playing in your 50th um, in the next match. Tell us what reaching 50 test matches means to you. Yeah, I think it's quite special. Um, I didn't even know how many games I was on. I um, only found out um, after the last test match that this would be my 50th. It kind of just goes by without you really noticing it. It's something special for me. I've always wanted to represent my country and this is definitely uh, it's a personal milestone and it's, it's one that I'll hold dear to my heart. I'll come, I'll come closer. Have you enjoyed or viewed or reflected on your career so far? Like there's been a lot that's happened. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, there's been a lot of ups and downs and it's definitely challenging um, to, to keep uh, you know, a good performance going for a long amount of time and also uh, navigating your way, your way through the lows. Um, I think that's, that's quite tough. And then, you know, the external pressures that, that uh, can influence your game uh, and also influence the team space. Um, those are things that you, you have to deal with and what you uh, constantly get better at dealing with. Uh, but at the end of the day, you almost have to remind yourself to keep enjoying it and uh, remember yourself as, you know, this uh, child or this teenager who just wanted to, to represent your country and, and show, show the world what you're about. You've been through um, squads with so many different massive names for South African cricket. Um, what are some of the things that, or what have you learned collectively from just each generation as they've gone by? Yeah, it's been an honor and a privilege to uh, play alongside some of those big names. Um, you know, I was watching them in, in high school and in primary school uh, uh, representing their country and I had a burning desire to one day uh, play at this level and to play with them. Some of my heroes is something that's really extraordinary and I still pinch myself to this day. Um, uh, yeah, I've learned a great deal from them and I've kept a relationship with I would say all of them and you know, some of them I, I keep uh, a close relationship with too. So yeah, I think it's it's what dreams are made of. That's what dreams are made of. You spoke a little bit earlier about, you know, maintaining that that hunger and just remembering your, your dream as a youngster. Um, at the age of 26, you have taken 226 test wickets. How do you manage to stay level-headed because you're a very mellow and cool guy and how do you keep that from from taking you over well for me you know um, as much as it is about getting wickets um, it's about you know being the best that i can be and there's no limit to that and um, yeah I, I feel like i'm nowhere near done so it's just about you know uh, coming back and playing the next game you can never take international cricket for granted you can't take anything for granted so um, it's, it's for me it's about you know the longevity in it as well and not just doing it for a short amount of time it's about doing it for a long time and I think that's what keeps driving me and how do you navigate your way through dry spells or through difficult patches yeah those those dry spells you know they they come um, at any time um, and I guess uh, you learn along the way everyone learns differently but for me it's just about realizing my strengths um, and also, you know, uh, uh, improving on my weaknesses, but most importantly, what I've learned is just realizing your strengths because that's what got you here. There's a lot of voices that come in and out of an international or a cricketer's career. There's so many coaches that come in and out of your life and so many people that offer lots of advice and some of them, you know, with really good intentions, mostly, I would say. Um, how, do you, how do you balance out the many, many, many people that have your best interests at heart and want to give you advice and, and how do you filter out the, the, the voices and listen to the ones that you eventually listen to? I guess being on this sort of platform and representing your country, I mean, that's the highest accolade and you, you're always going to get people in your ear, um, I guess, because, you know, they, they, they want to get the best out of you and you want to get the best out of yourself. But in terms of people who are there for for, for not the best interest, I think you can quickly, you know, 
um, realize that and you can you also in the same light you can also realize that people who've got your best interest at heart but at the end of the day it's about captaining your own ship and, and making those decisions and you know having that support structure around you is, is really important people who are gonna advise you you know in the right in the right manner and I think it's uh, uh, up to each individual to actually decipher who's there for your for your best interest um, and that's just a part of the process and what comes with the with the territory that's just one of those challenges but you don't at the end of the day you don't want to confuse yourself you want to keep things as simple as possible um, as I've mentioned and um, I think uh, yeah things things more often than not should go your way do you have any games that stand out in these last 50? Um, any particular moments, whether it was your own or a moment that belonged to someone else that just really stood out for you throughout your, your time in this test team? Um, we've seen some amazing performances from individuals, um, amazing performances uh, from a team perspective. But I do think, I do think that uh, for me, the tours that stand out was when we uh, toured to India in 2015 or 16. And uh, we actually were the first uh, men's ODI team to actually uh, beat India away from home, uh, South African team that is. And also when we went to Australia in 2016, uh, where you know a lot of our players were kind of retiring and um, we we really had to dig deep and we ended up winning the series away from home 2-1 and australia is a big is a big test match for us i think those two uh, test series uh, those two series actually um, um make the most impact for me in my career um, you know you what is it about test cricket that sets it apart from every other format for you um it's, it tests you in every sort of way. It tests you mentally, it tests you from a skill perspective, um, and it tests your longevity. So um, it's kind of like life, and it's, it ebbs and it flows, and it, it always finds a way to challenge you, uh, you as a team and you as an individual, whether someone is you know, batting on 100 or someone is approaching 100, and it's basically, or maybe your team is up against it and you have to do something miraculous with the ball, something miraculous with the bat, but it, you know the, the rewards are, I guess, much sweeter because you invest more of your your energy for a longer period of time in uh, uh, ver uh, variable conditions, uh, which constantly change. Sometimes you're on the back foot. Sometimes it's very seldom that you know you have a flawless test match. There's always some challenge uh, that's going to come your way. So. Uh, that's 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 what I feel sets Test cricket apart from from any other format. It's it's like life. This format also takes a massive physical toll on the body. Um, is there a different way that you approach a Test um, series in terms of preparing the body? Um, do you work out a certain different way, um, or is it pretty much the same for you? Um, I guess when you do play, when you do. When you do play test cricket, you you gear yourself up mentally um, to to do to bowl those long spells and to endure your body, I guess mentally to you to basically prepare your body, uh, you prepare yourself mentally to put in the extra yard and to do to put to to keep a high intensity for a longer period of time, but also um, from a scientific point of view, the game has become much more professional. You've got um, fitness trainers and um, yeah, strength and conditioning uh, routines that are uh, put in place so that uh, players can actually give themselves the best chance of uh, actually enduring a high intensity for uh, a longer period of time. So um, yeah, people are employed to make sure that you can you know gain those extra one percenters. But mentally, I think it's up to the individual to actually uh, prepare themselves for those long, for those long uh, uh, testing times. You're in your fifth test bubble. Um, bubble life has become life as we know it for, for athletes nowadays. Um, because of the length of time of each format, of this particular format, um, 
how have you how have you experienced life in a test cricket bubble um, and how much are you looking forward to the end <laughs> hopefully someday soon yeah the bubbles are definitely uh, not sustainable um, it's something that every cricketer and every media and management personnel could could uh, agree with um, you know we are still human beings and we still want our we would still like our freedom uh, freedom is a right after all but it's unfortunate with this pandemic that we kind of have to be not kind of that we have to be um, uh, yeah enclosed uh, and confined yeah to uh, to to a small amount of to a small space um, but at the end of the day uh, we are here for a reason you know uh, sometimes we just have to remind ourselves that we we are getting an opportunity to still earn we're getting opportunity to still do what we love and uh, through this pandemic many people actually have been struggling so sometimes you just have to remind yourself and look at the glass half full but uh, actually looking at it from a logical point of view um, I don't think it's sustainable the bubbles are slowly going away so uh, hopefully uh, the doctors can can find uh, better solutions.